Hi neighbors. My name's Duke. Welcome back to Castle in the Darkness. Happy Monday. I've got some good news. I believe I have solved the problem of being able to synchronize the chat room again. I mean, I, I didn't really solve it. I found another script that someone else made that accomplishes the same thing that the script I was using accomplishes. At least I hope so. I have tested it. I haven't had a chance to actually test it with a real chat log since I didn't have an appropriate one, but uh, if all goes according to plan, the chat log should be visible on the YouTube video of this stream. So we had a pretty eventful stream last time. Uh, we defeated the frog once and for all. He bowed down before my might. Uh, let's see. Let's check out my check out my loadout here. Uh, I think I'm pr I'll probably stick with the moon bow for now because the runic blade the damage is only one more than than the moon bow. Uh, and. I, I never really used this that much in my last playthrough because by the time I picked it up I already had a much better sword that did like way more damage than the bow, so I'm gonna stick with this. Um let's see. Do I wanna stick with the Gale Wind? Probably. At least for now, until I see what I'm gonna be up against in this in this run. I do like the uh the runic tunic combination. That sounds like a flavor of bubblegum. Runic tunic. But, uh, yeah, I'll stick with the bow for now. <clears throat> so, I was going to stream on Sunday, and I didn't have a chance, so I apologize for that. I mean, I did have a chance, but it just ended, ended up not being a good day for me because there's too much other stuff I had to do. Uh, but I am going to try really hard to do at least two streams this week. Possibly this and... The Binding of Isaac Rebirth, possibly this and the card game I have alluded to, uh, or possibly this twice. I don't know. I haven't completely decided yet. Uh, I don't think this will be the last. St oh, great, Mega Man blocks. I don't think this will be the last stream of Castle in the Darkness. I think it's going to take me at least one more to finish the game. Depends on how well or how poorly I do. Honestly, I'm I'm playing a lot more slowly than. Uh, than I would normally. Partially because it's harder to talk, or harder to play while talking, and po possibly because I'm being a little more thorough. Well, I'm being the same amount of thorough, I guess, but uh, I'm being thorough sooner. Alright, so this is actually an optional area uh, and the first time I got here I had a ton of trouble getting past this uh, there are just a couple jumps in this in this general area that are just kind of a nightmare uh, hopefully since I've already done it it won't be quite as difficult uh, oh hey what's up the Jaded Mew and shout out to Private Steve welcome glad you were both able to to make it to the stream. Okay, so that's the uh, fa that's famous vortex prism uh, that we heard about in previous streams. Once once you uh, use the vortex prism in the uh, the kind of DMZ zone, the uh, oh god, oh god. Okay, Whew, thank God. If I fell on spikes, I'd have to do that all over again. I'm going to go back and save. Yeah, I made that look a lot easier than it actually is, or a lot easier than it was the first time I tried it. Glad I sat down soon after the event popped up. Oh good, I wasn't sure if the uh, if the Steam notification actually happened or not, I didn't see it. I might have missed it while I was setting stuff up. This looks like a piece of a warp stone. So I'm not going to actually use that yet, because the thing that that opens up is much harder than I'm prepared to deal with at the moment. Hey, what's up, Quack Party? I'm glad I... Glad there are people coming to the stream because I wanted to test the, uh, the new, uh, chat subtitle script. And, uh, he or she is probably not watching this, but shout out to, uh, Reddit user Metal42. 
Oh wait, there's a uh, warp zone right here. I guess I can go ahead and show off what this vortex prism does, even if I'm not ready. I'm not. I I can't handle this this part yet. I mean, my armor is still only. Yeah, it's still only four. Uh, I'm going to get wrecked if I try to do this now. But this is a pretty cool little uh, sequence, so I will. And this this is just automatically happening. I don't have to use an item or anything. That is one heck of a tower. I guess I can go ahead and try this. I'm probably going to get creamed, but there's a save point right there, so... Actually, there might be an item I can go ahead and get. No. Alright, so this chest is frozen shut until we complete the challenges that this tower has to offer. Yeah, I'm glad you came to JDMU. Haven't seen you in a live stream for a while. Alright, so we have... Okay, that thing just did like a quarter of my life bar, so... And this is just the first boss, so... Yeah, not, uh... Can I even hurt this thing? My weapon does not appear to be doing... Anything to it. Okay. I did not... I did not dodge well in that attempt, but I'm going to... Tr I'm going to attempt to dodge better this time. I want to at least figure out if I can hit this thing yet. Okay, so that was a bad dodge. Okay. Let's try actually hitting this thing with magic. Okay. So that actually worked uh, fairly well. This reminds me of a Ninja Gaiden boss for some reason. The uh, original NES Ninja Gaiden. Alright, so if I just get close enough to it that it swoops, then... Uh, okay. So even though this thing does a ton of damage, if I can avoid getting hit, I might be able to go on ahead and... Oh, thanks to the JDMU. I appreciate it. Hmm, I wonder if, uh, if I have better magic for this. I know I said I wasn't going to do this yet, but I, th I think this first boss, at least, I should actually be able to, uh, to do something to him. I, th I think the shield is just probably the best magic for this situation. Yeah, I mean, this first boss is killing me in, like, four or five hits, so not, uh, not very confident about the rest of this tower. Alright, did that miss, or did it hit and just not do any damage? Okay, so this thing seems to have a small hitbox. I kind of have to hit it right in its uh, chest face area to do any damage, it looks like. Okay, that was a pretty good uh, series of hits there. If I, could, if I could pull off a few more of those... See, the problem with the, uh, the shield is that it follows me. So it's a, it's a little difficult to position it exactly the way I want to. When I do hit with it, it is doing significant damage though. Oh wait, it looks like I can just hide in this corner here and not have to worry about him. His uh, projectiles would probably still be a threat there, but if it's just a swoop attack, yeah, okay. That, hmm. But the projectiles also don't do as much damage. See, when I'm on, when I'm on this side of him, I don't think I can hit him with a shield at all, really. Since he's, uh, since he's moving away from me. Several of my rebirth streams keep giving you errors on YouTube. Uh, do you know what kind of error it is? Or is it different errors? Also, is it happening with any other videos on YouTube or just those? Because I haven't heard any uh, any other uh, any other problems, but uh, I might be able to check it out. All right, I've gotten pretty close to death here. Uh, if I just if I do this, I mean I have zero health according to my health bar. I do kind of wish you had a more accurate representation of your health in this game, because the health is basically just a percentage 
from zero to a hundred, no matter what your actual, you know, how many hit points you actually have. So a little more, uh, more detailed breakdown of that would be useful. Not necessary though. I mean, it's not a deal breaker for me, obviously. I forgot that this guy is apparently, or thing, is apparently immune to uh, physical attacks. Or may maybe it's just the bow. I don't remember if I was able to hit this thing with a sword or not. Alright, it has two units of health remaining. One unit of health remaining. Damn it! Uh, hey, what's up, Afro? Error has occurred thing where it goes all staticky and you've tested them repeatedly. Huh. Oh, the older ones. I haven't watched any of the older ones recently. <sighs> Alright, I want to do this. I want to try this one more time since I was so close. I don't want to spend all stream trying to beat one boss like I did with the, uh, the water dragon thing. Oops, I forgot. Well, this might actually be a better spell for the situation. I mean, it doesn't seem to chain quite as well as a shield does, but I can hit him in I can hit it in more situations than I can with a shield. I keep saying him. I have no idea what this thing is. Actually, is this even showing up on the stream? Because if since I'm streaming in 30 frames per second, I'm not sure how this looks. Because it's actually like uh, it's a blinking sprite. So hopefully, it's not either invisible or. Well, if it's, if it's visible, then that's fine. But, uh... Yeah, sometimes flashing sprites can behave a little oddly when you record or stream in 30 FPS. Alright, this is doing significantly less damage to him per hit. Well, I'm getting way fewer hits in as well. Yeah, I, I should have stuck with the shield. But, oh well. Whittling it down little by little. I was hoping if I actually catch him with the tornado part, that would uh, get more hits in, but it doesn't seem like it. Just a couple each time. If I remember correctly, by the time I, I attempted the tower before, I had a spell that was way better suited for this. And I will probably be getting that soon. See, I think that's why this is taking me longer than I did last time. Because last time, or in my original run, I leveled up significantly more than, uh, than I should have. Basically, to put it in RPG terms, I did the main quest before I tried any of the side quest stuff. Or I made it a lot farther in the main quest. This time I'm sort of breaking up the action by doing the quote-unquote side quest stuff a little earlier makes it a little bit more challenging but also a little more interesting I think alright damn it he's showing up it's flickering okay good alright I'll come back to the crystal tower later I know I've said that numerous times in this run but uh yeah, I'm not going to sit here and beat my head against that. So, let's head back to the Windy Ruins. Yeah, I'll have to take a look at those old Binding of Isaac videos. Also, uh, hello Galen O'Reilly. Because there was an issue with my Laser Cat video a while back, and fortunately, Oxbow uh, let me know about it so I could go in and just re-upload that video. I do have all of those old Finding of Isaac videos saved, so if there is a problem, it should be pretty trivial for me to, uh, oh, I killed that thing in one hit. It should be pretty trivial for me to go in and re-upload it. So I still have plenty of other options. I could be doing right now. Um, right now I'm, I'm sort of on the main quest path um, and I'm going to continue on this path until I get one more item 
and then I'll backtrack a little bit and go go do something else because I do still need to do to uh, finish the water area because there's a very important item there that I didn't that I didn't get because I was stymied by the the water dragon. This thing's actually kind of cool. The bow. Kind of sad that I never used it before. Also, it's weird that I never got the axe again. I, I don't know if I'll even get the axe on this playthrough. Because, I mean, oh god. As far as I know, there's no way to get it besides going back and defeating those axe-wielding knight dudes. Oh god. Shit. And I wish I bought and played this game before watching your streams. Well, uh, if you still want to keep yourself, uh, you know, fresh, uh, the game's only like six or seven dollars on Steam, I think. And I, there's still a whole bunch of stuff in this game that I haven't done. So if you want to stop watching and play it yourself, you know, I wouldn't be offended or anything. Obviously, I always enjoy it when someone buys a game because of one of my streams. Feels nice to... to make a sale. But obviously, you know, you don't have to. I generally only watch playthroughs of, of games that I know I'm probably not going to play, or that I've already played. I mean, I watched like a Giant Bomb Quick Look, which is actually how I learned about this game, and which just shows off like the first segment of the game, and that's fine. But uh, yeah, generally a complete playthrough, I will uh, I will avoid. So like the Dark Souls games, or Bloodborne, uh, any game on the PS4 really, uh, I can watch those and not worry about ever having to spoil myself since I'm not going to play those games anytime soon. The Torch! That's the item I was after. You bought games because you watched an LP? Yeah, uh, I've done that a few times. I mean, not an LP, but like a video of it. Alright, so now that I have the torch, let's head back, try not to die before I make it back to the save point, or the warp zone. Close enough. Alright, you actually don't need the torch to do this next part of the game, but I wanted to grab it anyway. Uh, let's see, castle one, this is what I want. Zelda 2, yeah, I can I can kind of see the comparison there. Uh, let's see, do I want to go forward or back? I forget. Okay, where where does this take me? All right, that that's too far. I don't want to be in the red section of the castle yet. I never played Faxanadu, so I can't can't really speak to that. That was one of those old Falcom games, right? Like East or Legacy of the Wizard. Dragon Slayer. I might be part of the Dragon Slayer series. I'm actually playing a Falcom game right now. It's uh, Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky on Steam. I've been taking a break from it, but I'm enjoying it. It's, it's a uh, JRPG. Oh god. <clears throat> there, was n there wasn't a place to land there and I panicked. Might have been able to make that jump if I hadn't panicked. Well, now I, now I have a chance to kill some more of these night dudes. Who knows if they're going to drop any axes, though. I mean, not that I need the axe at this, this point in the game. If I had the axe, I could flip that switch. Which, uh, you can't do with the bow. Yeah, I'm enjoying it, the JDMU. The story, uh... Takes a little while to get going, but I'm really enjoying it so far. Gameplay-wise, I'm not really sure. Okay, so with the torch, you have a larger 
radius of vision here. Did I? I might have already tried. I think I did. I already made it to the torture chamber and I decided I wasn't ready for it yet. But now that I have the bow and the better sword, I might be okay. Because the main reason I turned back was because that guy was taking so many hits to kill. Uh, yeah, I think I did come here. I totally forgot about that. Uh, let's switch to the Runic Blade for now. Because I'm going to need as much damage as I can get. I believe. I don't think this area is particularly hard. But, uh... There are stalactites that will kill you instantly. Oh, hey, what's up, Bippo? Yeah, uh, this was kind of an impromptu stream. I wasn't 100% sure if I'd be able to stream tonight. But, glad you can make it. Oh wait, that's right, I was going to switch to the Runic Blade. Okay, that wasn't that bad. If I had the Runic Blade, that would have gone even easier. Hmm, what is this? I don't remember why why this is here. Oh, I guess because it spits fire at you. I mean that makes sense. It sure looked like a like a fire spitting thing, but uh never be too sure. Crap, this is a long jump. Okay. Phew. Might pick up the new gauntlet. Yeah, I uh Wait, did I wanna step on that? Oh, I sure hope so. New gauntlet looks kinda cool. Pretty much all I saw of it, as usual, is the uh, giant bomb quick look, but uh, what I saw looked entertaining. It's made by the uh, Magicka people, right? I liked Magicka in theory, and it looks like the new Magicka fixes some of the problems I had with the original Magicka. So I'm, I might like to... Check that out sometime. Don't play as a warrior. Why is that? Was he nerfed? Uh oh crap. Oh wait. I can do this. I just need my I need my bird. For a second I thought I hadn't God, that does a lot of damage. I thought I hadn't gotten the bird yet, but I have. What does the S stand for again? Super Falcon? Sounds like a Japanese video game console. Fly, my pretty. Thank you. Alright, I could go back and... Actually, I'm, I think I will go back and switch to, to a different spell. Because if I'm not mistaken, I think there's a boss coming up or something else that I want different magic for. Let's go back with the Gale Wind. Hey, I got the Runic Tunic combo. Nice. There should be an achievement you unlock for equipping that combo. Call it like... I don't know. 23 flavors or something. Alright, this is easier than it looks. That sound effect is really obnoxious though. I hope I'm not missing any secrets. The Wizarding Gauntlet plays a lot like Magicka. Yeah, that's what I hear. Like, I liked Magicka. I, when I played it, I was playing with some friends and I was using a controller. And I really did not like how the game played with the controller. But uh, it looks better in Magicka too. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, not sure if I would if I would like the Wizarding Gauntlet or not. Depends on how response of the spell interfaces, I think. Okay, here we go. This is what I want different magic for. To kill the, uh... Actually, this thing reminds me of the, uh, Carrion Queen from Binding of Isaac. Or, or was Car Carrion Queen was in the original, right? Not, not just Rebirth. Might just be Rebirth. Maybe it was in, maybe she was an addition in Wrath of the Lamb, but... 
what this thing super reminds me of. Not much of a threat when you have the right magic. Of course, I didn't get hit, so I'm not sure how much damage I could potentially take here. There we go. Thank you. Press the two button combo to select spells and then use the right stick to shoot. See, that sounds a lot better than it was in Magicka. Uh, in Magicka, you had to use the stick to select uh, the spell components, and it was really mushy, and half the time I ended up selecting spells that I didn't mean to. Waiting to see if the Steam sale beats the Amazon price. Yeah, it was what, like 10 bucks on Amazon? Uh, okay. Uh, I'll stick with this. This is good. They announced, like, a date for the Steam sale yet? I guess it would be kind of silly for them to, to do that, since it would discourage people from buying games until that, that point. Of course, now that the refund thing... Oops. Now that the refund policy is in place, people can just buy a game, and then if it goes on sale in, within two weeks, they can uh, get a refund and buy the game for the sale price. And in fact, the refund policy specifically says you're allowed to do this. Darkness. Alright, so this is a really short sword, but I'm assuming there's some sort of trick to it. Maybe it does a lot of damage. Sacrifice range for damage. Oh, well, kill that thing a lot quicker, that's for sure. Let's uh, go back and actually look at it before I determine if I want to use this or not. See if it has any other effects. 11 through the 22nd, cool. I never play Magicka with a controller. Uh, I mean, we were playing four people on one screen, so controller was pretty, uh, pretty necessary in that situation, unfortunately. So it does 10 damage, which is way higher than any of my other weapons. But it does have that really small uh, range. Hey, what's up, Cistern? Uh, I want to switch. I want to stick with the runic blade for now. Not not just because of the runic tune combo, but because I don't want to have to deal with uh, having to be like a millimeter away from an enemy to deal damage to it. All right, this thing. It's Unis Satan. Oh God. All right. If I remember correctly, I can just sort of stand here and cheese him. Well, maybe not cheese him with magic. Wait, can I hit this thing? Uh, maybe I can't... Oh. There might be something special I have to do before I can deal damage to him. Maybe, maybe he just got really mad that I called him Yudin Satan, and he decided not to let me deal damage to him. Alright, let's try just bypassing him this time. See if there's uh, there's a trick to him, I don't remember what it is. Oh, you know what? I remember. You have to hit those lightning bolts right as he shoots them, so he so he damages himself. But you get the thunder blast magic for defeating him, which does the same thing he was doing. It's actually a pretty cool spell. Uh, you might remember in the castle there was a, a painting with a lightning bolt on it, and if you shoot the lightning, this spell in the room with that painting, it, um, it gives you some kind of secret. I think it's just money or something. Like, nothing spectacular. But, uh... You know, every, every little bit helps and all that. And other cliches. Oh, god. 
This jump is gonna be ridiculous. Okay. Well, okay, this isn't so bad. Alright. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have the chance to heal before facing whatever's in here. Excellent. Okay. Also, I don't know. I was I might enjoy Magicka more single player. Shit. Why did I I should not have done that. I mean, yeah, when you play multiplayer, you get into all kinds of <laughs> You get into all kinds of hilarious situations with the friendly fire, but it can also be really frustrating. And unless you're playing with the right group of people, the frustration might outweigh the hilarity in that situation. Crap. I mean, I'm all, I'm all for hilarious friendly fire, but uh, if the people you're playing with aren't digging it, then... Uh, then it's no fun for you. How annoying some of your friends are with friendly fire. Well, like with my, with my friends, we would never friendly fire each other on purpose. Like that's always kind of <laughs> the deaths are starting to rack up. Yeah, we would never friendly fire each other on purpose, but we also weren't a hundred percent careful with the way we were aiming our shots and stuff. So friendly fire would happen. Because, I mean, that's not an easy game. All, all, all hitting your teammates does is screw you all. I might actually, uh... Shit! Oh, wow. Surprised that didn't kill me. I want to do this before I go in that door. Because if I remember correctly, this part's easier. What? Oh, the blood drop. Crap, that's some crappy timing. He doesn't do it on purpose, he just doesn't learn from past fuck-ups. Yeah, that can be a problem. But then again, playing Magic a single player doesn't seem like it would be super fun either. I mean, you'd have to do everything yourself. That would be extremely difficult. Unless you play it. I mean, I guess there's an easy, easier setting you can play on. But, you know, where's the fun in that? Oh god. Okay. Damn it. Damn it. Wow. Well, oh, I guess this place is called the torture chamber for a reason. Eventually, I'll learn that I can't stand there. I mean, there's no visual cue that that's about to happen. For the, uh... One of the middle fingers from the developer in this game. This game doesn't have a ton of middle fingers in it. Like it, it's, I wouldn't classify this as a Maso core game or whatever you want to call it. Whatever I want to be the guy would fall into. But this game definitely has moments like that. Magicka 2 has a fairy revive for single player. Oh, that sounds cool. And a kick button for trolls. Well, I only play with people I know anyway, so... Trolls are never an issue for me. I've learned from past mistakes not to trifle with the general internet. Unless, you know, you immediately mute them. Which I did in Hearthstone for the short amount of time that I played that game. I mean, you can't even chat in Hearthstone. You just have emotes, which I think is a really smart way of doing it. But, since it's the internet, people still figured out ways to be dicks with the emotes, so I would just mute those immediately. Not that I can't handle it, but you know, why, why deal with that if you don't have to? I have no friends who are trolls. Well, we don't troll each other. I mean, 
We do, but not, uh, not repeatedly. Not... Consistently. Shit. Having a little more difficulty with this area than I imagined. I might have been correct in my assessment that I shouldn't be here yet. I really wish I had better armor, because that would help me... ...with a lot of these situations. I hope I didn't miss something. Hey, what's up, Koss? You didn't know? Oh, well, I had a Steam notification. At least I think I did. I didn't see it. I might have... I might have chosen the wrong time for the Steam notification, in which case I apologize. I was pretty sure I chose... There we go. 7 p.m. My time. Oh my god. Yeah, see? Yes, on the darkness live stream number three. So, sorry you did not get the notification. Yeah, this is, uh, this is kind of getting my blood pressure up a little bit, I'm not gonna lie starting to sweat a little bit. Not just because I had to turn my fan off for the stream. You didn't get the notification? Oh, that sucks. Sorry, Koss. Man, I don't see how you can get through there without taking any damage at all. I mean, I'm sure it's possible, but... Damn, that's rough. Would you stop bleeding everywhere? It's making my job a lot harder. Uh, right now it's 7.37pm in my time zone. So you've missed about 37 minutes. Uh, okay. I don't remember this boss being that difficult. However, those are famous last words, so we'll see. I might have the wrong magic equipped, to be honest. Okay, so I don't have to hit this thing in the face. But hitting him not in the face might not do anything. It's knocking off these men, these clay golem things. At least I hope they're I hope they're clay golems. I hope this thing isn't made out of people. Alright, am I damaging it when I hit it in the face? It doesn't look like it. Maybe I just have to keep knocking those things off until it exposes his inner core of, uh, of whatever's inside that thing. I'm not supposed to say sorry. Oh. Sorry. I'll try not to apologize. Uh, let's see. Let's go back with Gale Wind. I think that might be the... Most efficient magic for this boss. We'll find out, though. Maybe, maybe I have to knock him back into something. Maybe that's this boss's gimmick, like the uh, the boss from the desert zone of Sonic and Knuckles, the first desert zone, where you, where you just have to knock him back into the quicksand. No, it doesn't look like there's anything back there to knock him into. Hmm. Looks like I did a little damage to him. Alright, that did nothing. Alright, can't let him... Okay, so I do have to hit him in the face. Okay. I just wasn't doing... Okay, so I, I, I have a feeling the way this is going to play out is I have to keep him at bay with my sword and then jump up and hit him in the face with magic. Since hitting him... Okay, that that was effective. Since hitting him in the face with my sword is not exactly feasible. I mean, it's feasible, but I can only get a couple hits in per attempt. Uh, 
Looks like I picked the right magic for this boss at least. This thing is shedding an awful lot of people from its body. You think it would be losing mass right about now, but it just keeps on trucking. All right, people golem destroyed. Excellent. Looks like something from La Milana. Yeah, a lot of this game reminds me of La Milana. Right, was that the, uh, okay, well let's go back and save, since apparently there's more. And there's a save point right here. Don't forget to go back and save in this game, it's important. If you learn nothing else from this live video walkthrough. Rem remember when I first started LP and I posted a video walkthrough? Okay, so it's just, just the chest. Cabin key. Well, we saw a cabin that was locked. Uh, perhaps I should head back there now that I have the key. Totally forget what's in there, but uh, hope it's worth it. But yeah, the title of the video was Let's Play Pugsy Video Walkthrough Episode 1. Oh god. Or episode, whatever the episode was, which was a pretty... Oh yeah, I still have to go in that door too. A pretty hefty title. All right, well, let's get to another save point or die on spikes. Oh yeah, Mega Man Two video walkthrough. I guess I did that as well. I really want to go back. I did save after I got the key, right? Yeah, cabin key. Okay. I really want to go back and redo some of those old LPs. Just trying to go back and watch them now is pretty rough. Shit. I know that's that's just me though. I am my own worst critic. Except for all the people who say I suck. They're pretty harsh critics as well. No, I'm just kidding. There aren't many of those. Alright, so what is the safest way to do this? I think I want to fall and then jump a little bit over. Yeah, okay. I, I definitely want to get the save point though, because it's a lot easier than backtracking every time. Or a lot faster than backtracking as well. Do Give the Bump Presents Let's Play Video Walkthrough. I still want to start using video game related entertainment program for my uh, for my videos. I, I just think it sounds, it sounds a lot classier. Maybe I'll shorten it to VGREP. Video game related entertainment programming. I think this might just be a page to be honest. I, re I remember this being a pain in the ass. And whatever the reward is not being worth it. Yep, just a page. Wasn't as much of a pain in the ass as last time, but there's some tricky jumps. Oh, see? Cistern. Calling me out. I wish the phrasing long play had caught on. Well, to me, a long... A long play is more of a, just a straight playthrough of a game without commentary. Which... There's definitely uh, a place for that. That's a valuable service. Just not, uh, it's, it's not really what I do. Am I going the wrong way? I have to do, I have to go back? No, this is right. I have to do that whole thing with the page again. Because I jumped the gun and walked into spikes. I don't know. I guess Let's Play is good enough. It's descriptive. If you watch a Let's Play 
You pretty much know what you're getting. Alright. Don't walk into spikes. Good job. This is what's a pain in the ass about getting this page. It's not getting it, it's getting back to a save point. Holy cow. And it's just a page that literally does nothing. It is, it is a meaningless collectible. And yet I get it anyway. Why? Because video games have corrupted me. They've warped my mind into finding value in meaningless accomplishments. They've sucked all the joy out of life. The saw blades across the door are a real dick move, yeah. You're telling me, I remember those things being quite the hassle. This is one of those I want to be the guy moments. And there are moments like that in this game. They're not terribly common, but they are there. It's like trying to get the, uh, that one trinket in VVVVVV. It's called doing things the hard way or something like that. You know, it's a totally meaningless trinket. And it's one of the hardest things to do in that game. But man, when you pull it off, it's just really satisfying. Speaking of VVVVVV, if anyone hasn't played it yet, I believe it's still on sale on the 3DS eShop for $4. And I bought it anyway, even though I already own the game on Steam. Because, hey, it's an it's another game to play on to play on the go. Yeah, Vin Vinny VDVT, that's the one. Where you fall up the tower and then back down. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, Galen, I'm I'm kinda with you. I wish I wish there was a way for me to record my a way to record my commentary in a separate audio track from the game itself. I mean, I, I could do that, but there's no way... YouTube doesn't have that functionality, because... You know, I'm all about options, and like how I give people the option to watch the chat... I, I'd like it if they also had the option to watch the game without commentary, if, if they wanted to. But, uh... I mean, I could re record a separate audio track in Audacity with just the commentary and then leave the gameplay audio in the video and then mash the two together but there's no way I mean if, if, if you uh, download the video and watch it in VLC you could do it that way but there's no way to actually do it on YouTube and I, I don't think many people would go to the trouble of downloading a video just to watch it without commentary they probably uh, they probably just do without So, you know what to uh, petition YouTube for. I thought about, I mean not recently, but as, at one point I thought about not doing any vocal commentary and just doing all my commentary through YouTube annotations. And uh... I scrapped that idea because A, I'm extremely lazy and it would be a lot of work to do that. And B, I just don't know if a lot of people would be interested in that. I mean, I assume that the reason people watch these things is because they like listening to me talk. Might not, I might not understand it, but that's the reality of it, I believe. And I'm not sure if YouTube annotations would be useful. 
upload them in separate videos and have people play them simultaneously. Yeah, or I mean I could just record a separate version of each video and upload both of them. But that would, that would get confusing for people, wondering why there are two versions of every video. Generally, don't watch games without commentary. I mean, it depends. There, there are use cases for, for each situation, I think. For me, anyway. Like, if I'm watching a speedrun, I don't always need commentary for that. I mean, if someone's doing something really cool in a game, i.e. the opposite of what I'm doing right now, <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> then I can picture myself watching that with no commentary. I mean, can, can you imagine this with no commentary? Just me trying this over and over again without yammering, yammering over it? God, I wish I could just trigger that thing before landing in the middle there. Or even if not a speedrun, just someone doing something cool in a game. Like, I like watching glitch videos sometimes. Just, you know, short four or five minute videos, if that. You know, th those are cool without commentary. Of someone breaking a game in an, in an interesting way. Or, yeah, like Pippa says, just using it as a walkthrough. And someone using this as a walkthrough would be sorely disappointed. Alright, in this section, you have to die 15 times to get a useless... A useless trinket. Why do I keep doing this? Why do I continue to subject myself to this? I mean, is it really that big a deal if I don't get 100% on this playthrough? I'm getting really good at that jump, though. Yeah, and there's always the situation where you're looking, you're looking for a walkthrough, and all you can find are people with really annoying voices playing the game. Which, I mean, I'm sure there have been situations where people did that with me. They're like, "Man, I really want a walkthrough of a video walkthrough of Castle in the Darkness. But why does this guy have to talk through the whole thing?" Which, you know, that com that goes back to the can't please all the people all the time thing. And that's something I just have to accept, I guess. Now, if YouTube ever implements the feature to have multiple audio tracks in the video, then I would definitely consider recording separate commentary, because that's just... that's just giving people options. But, uh... I have to use the restroom <laughs> and not scream at the top of my lungs with the mic muted. I'll be back in a moment.
And I'm back. Sorry, I hate taking a break in the middle of a stream like that, but uh, it sadly was not optional this time, if you know what I mean. XCOM 2 is PC exclusive. Yeah, that I don't understand. I guess it didn't sell well enough on consoles to justify a console port of the sequel. Shit. I mean, from what, from everything I heard, the console port sounded fine. Alright, I, I feel like I need to set a limit for myself. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to keep doing this all night. So, if I'm still trying to get this page at 8 p.m. that gives me another four minutes then I'm going to give up and move on because this is not good content and I'm not producing good content for the internet right now or maybe there are people who enjoy this I don't know who enjoy seeing me suffer I mean I'm sure there's a market for that Fallout 4 won't be on the previous generation consoles. Yeah, that's not really surprising. I hope Fallout 4 runs on my computer. I have a feeling it won't and I'll be sad. Or if it does run, it might run really poorly. I might end up having to invest in, in a new video card to play Fallout 4. Which, I mean, I need a new video card anyway. But Fallout 4 would give me an excuse to, to do that. Just be, it'd be a lot of money to get a good one, though. Alright, I've got three and a half more minutes. So I, I guess it was closer to five minutes when I said I'm stopping at, I'm, I'm going to move on at 8 p.m. I'm asked for making that jump in the previous room, though. I generally have a good bit of patience for stuff like this. But it's... It's a bit different when I'm streaming. The trailer for 4 didn't look that much different than previous versions. Yeah, but... That might have just been an early build or whatever. I'm not sure if the actual game will look a lot better than that. Alright, I need to not panic when I go through the store. Wow, the buzz were in a complete, completely different position that time. I wonder if it remembered what position they were in when I went through that door. I could have saved myself a lot of hassle if I just paid attention to that. Oh, thank god. Wow, right under the wire, too. I had like 40 seconds left to, to do that. Fallout 4 will run on the same engine as Skyrim. Oh, really? It's kind of a surprise. My computer couldn't run Skyrim all that well. I mean, it was, it was adequate, but barely adequate. Maybe that's why I didn't enjoy that game as much. Oops. I didn't need to, to do that. I guess I can kill this guy again. But yeah, as, as far as vis visuals and video games go, really the only things I care about are 1080p and 60 frames per second. Not even- 1080p isn't even that important. But for me, personally, 60 frames per second is so important because that actually affects how the game plays. 
Games that run at 60 just feel more responsive. They're more satisfying. I, I can overlook bad or subpar graphics if the game runs smoothly. And for me, that's what my issue with, uh, with Elder Scrolls was. Even when I turned the graphics quality down quite a bit, I still did not get a great frame rate out of it. Like, not even a consistent 30, I don't think. And that really bummed me out. I still played that game for like 40 hours though before I gave up on it. I mean, I, I had other problems with the game too. But if it ran at, at a nice crisp 60, I might have been able to overlook some of those other, other problems. But I guess I'm a weirdo. Graphics should have stayed at Deus Ex 1 levels. Well, uh... I mean, I thought I had Deus Ex 1 looked perfectly fine. Uh... I thought- I think graphics should have stayed at Super Nintendo levels. Oops! Whew! I barely saved myself. But that's just me being an old curmudgeon. What was not liking the 3D. Fallout 3 didn't appeal to you. Fallout 3, I liked it at the time. Looking back on it, it definitely had issues. But I think that Fallout New Vegas is an objectively much better game than Fallout 3 was. Like New Vegas is among my, my top favorite RPGs ever. And I'm hoping that Fallout 4 is more like New Vegas than Fallout 3. But since it's not Obsidian working on this one, I'm not getting my hopes up. Your graphics card can handle Skyrim on top settings fine. Yeah, I, I'm using a. Uh, I, I looked it up recently. My graphics card is a GeForce GTX 560, which is quite a few generations old at this point. I really need to look at upgrading it. I always get really nervous when I start. Oops. Well, that was the wrong button to push. I I, I always get really nervous. Well, that's one way to do it, I guess. When I have to start tinkering around inside my computer, because I'm always afraid that I'll break something. <laughs> Morrowind's too hardcore for your card. Morrowind ran pretty well on my computer, but I cannot get into that game at all. I don't know, I guess just as far as Bethesda goes, I'm on Team Fallout rather than Team Elder Scrolls. Just the setting appeals to me more than the Elder Scrolls setting, I guess. You have an 860? Nice, Private Steve. Yeah, I really want to get one starting with a 9. Like, I, th I think, I hear the 980 is pretty good. That car is like 500 bucks. And if I install that, you know, who knows if my power supply will be enough to handle it. I might have to upgrade that as well. And even if I do upgrade to a 980... Oh, well, there's the axe. Oh wait, I probably shouldn't have equipped it. Because at this stage of the game, the axe doesn't really do a whole lot for me. But yeah, like, what if I buy, like, a, what if I spend 500 bucks on a new graphics card only to discover that my processor is keeping me from enjoying games at a high frame rate anyway? Like, that, that kind of stuff really stresses me out. That's one reason I can really understand why someone would be more, more of a console gamer than a PC gamer. I want to switch, switch back to my sword real quick. More, <clears throat> more one with a modernized UI. Well, didn't they, or didn't some team remake Morrowind in the Oblivion engine? Or was that like an, an in-process thing or in-progress project that's not complete yet?
Because I know my uncle was messing around with that. They called it more oblivion, I think. I'm not sure if it's any good or not, but I assume being in the oblivion engine would be a step up. I wonder if the people making that mod got really sad when S Skyrim came out and Morrowind and the Oblivion mod didn't seem like as good of an idea at that point. Skywind, Morrowind on Skyrim engine. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of work. It might be so much work that by the time they finish it, the next Elder Scrolls will, will be out. I guess it's an eternal struggle. Alright, I need to go back to the woods. Is it faster to go there via the cave or via Alexandria? I think it's faster via the cave. And also, while I'm here, I can uh, head back to the water level now that I have a better weapon and some different magic. I can see if I can take on the... Uh, the water dragon. Great. Full mod support for XCOM 2, yeah. Seems like a good idea for that kind of game. I do want to play the XCOM games, well, I, I want to play the recent XCOM, XCOM game. Alright. <laughs> the same thing I did last time. Weird. Weird that something different didn't happen this time. I thought for sure that that block wouldn't break this time. But I mean, I have really enjoyed turn-based strategy games in the past, and I think I would like XCOM if I just buckle down and give it a shot. I can kill all this stuff in one hit now. It's awesome, even the crab. Alright, so I'll go back and unlock the cabin, and see what's in there, and then after that, I will give the old water dragon another shot, since, since I'm here anyway. I know there's not much progress to make in a stream. Basically, doing the torture chambers and another area are, I already spent a lot of time trying. But, you know, I've had fun hanging out and talking, even if I didn't get a lot done. Turn-based. No, I, I've liked turn-based games, turn-based strategy games before Koss. Uh, I've really liked uh, Advance Wars on the GBA. I, I, I like the Shadowrun Returns games, or the one that I played anyway. Still haven't played Dragonfall much. But, uh... Yeah, I, I really like that kind of stuff sometimes. Alright, so the other cabin should be right here. Yeah. Alright, what you got for me, cabin? Alright, those floor tiles look breakable, but I'll need a different weapon. So let's head back over to Bagu's house. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do- I am a run and jump action kind of guy, but uh... I have like turn-based stuff in the past. And RPGs, I mean, I, I'm a big JRPG player. Those are essentially turn-based strategy games, just with a different, uh, different aesthetic. Man, I'm really glad I got this axe. I kind of forgot that I would need it for this, uh, but I got lucky, and one of those dudes dropped it. Oh man, I might not be able to do this yet. Crap, I forgot about these ghosts. I don't think there's a way to get past this ghost without getting hit. <laughs> Super 3D's Noah, Super 3D Noah's Ark on Steam. Yeah, that was that was interesting. So I'm gonna have to get hit at least one more time to get out of here. 
So unless this... Unless there's something really cool down here. Because I can't kill these things, right? Even with magic? Oh man, dark armor. Does that make me immune to the ghosts? I don't remember. I don't think it does. What magic spells do I have? Uh, oh hey, uh, Paraguay? Uh, I have a bunch of them. I will show you when I get back to a save point. Yeah, I'm... Unless this dark armor protects me from the ghost. Okay, so I guess I have to wait until I have better armor to come back here. That really sucks. Uh, here, here are the spells I have. I have these. I'm sticking with uh, Gale Wind for the time being. There's one or two that can kill him, really? Well, uh, do you know which one's off the top of your head? Because I, I, I can just try all of these. You know, try on error. Oh wait, I have to switch, switch back to my axe. Key Blast. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Paraguay. That's extremely helpful. Oops, wrong button. Let's go ahead and save so I don't have to re-equip this combo every time. Yeah, I did this last time, and I just sort of assumed they couldn't be killed at all. So I ended up having to wait until I had better armor to come back here, to, to get armor, which was kind of a uh, dumb catch-22. Whoa! Uh, oh, awesome. All right, thank you, Paraguay. I just have to not <laughs> not get hit when they get angry. I don't like them when they're angry. Oh god, <laughs> I, I did not think that through. Yeah, Super Noah's Ark 3D. That uh, should be a pretty good time. But man, I can't believe they're going to have that but not Chex Quest. Because when it comes to really questionable Doom mods, uh, Chex Quest is, for me, the superior product. Actually, was, was Noah's Ark, was that a Doom mod or was that a Wolfenstein 3D mod? They both came out on the Super Nintendo, as well as Noah's Ark. Alright, Dark Armor. It's better be worth it. I mean, I guess I should have tried every spell the first time I, uh, I came through here. Oh, well. If I hit him, he's just gonna get mad and charge me anyway, so I just have to take one for the team. And Actually, that still did a lot of damage even with the dark armor. Oh, it was a wolf 3D mod? Well, screw that. Give me Chex Quest. <sighs> Alright, let's check out this dark armor. 2,000 year old cursed suit of armor. Yeah, I don't think I ever used this because I didn't want I didn't want to be cursed Even though I don't know what the curse does So I guess I should uh, I Should at least try it out and figure it out okay, So keep the dark armor switch back to the I wonder if it like combos with the sword of darkness at all Maybe it makes the sword better No they're different colors. The sword's a lot darker dark than the armor. Your wishlist is out of control. Yeah, I think I have like almost 40 games on my wishlist. A lot of stuff that I just forgot about. The ghost is the heaviest hitting enemy, period. Oh, well, that makes sense. I mean, I thought it was invulnerable. Which would have made it, that would have made it the most formidable enemy in the game. Mm 
I always add games I'm even a little bit interested in to my wish list. Ever since uh, I added the game Rex, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I added the game Rex Rocket to my wish list, and the developer gave me a copy of that game, which was super cool of him. And uh, <laughs> ever since then, I always add every game to my wish list, even even though that has that hasn't happened again. I guess I just uh, I just got lucky. I've had a few other developers, I guess I'm on some mailing list of streamers, which I don't know why since I have so few viewers, but uh, I've gotten a few free games just people sending me emails out of the blue, but so far it hasn't been anything, oops wrong way, hasn't been anything I'm really interested in enough to stream or LP, but it's, it's very nice of them nonetheless. Rex Rocket is a cool game, by the way. I, I uh, streamed it on Hitbox. Uh, that was back when I was occasionally streaming Sans commentary, just uh, just for the chill factor. But uh, Rex Rocket, it reminds me a lot of this game. It's sort of a, uh, it's an exploration platformer. Am I still going? No, I think I, yeah, I have to keep going this way until I see the red spider. Which should be, yep, yeah, right there, okay. But yeah, Rex Rocket is another difficult uh, Metroidvania style game that is really cool. I might I might do a proper stream of that, so or LP of that with commentary and everything someday. Four hundred and thirty games on your wish list. Wow. I'd probably add a lot more games to my wish list if I knew that I that I had time to play them all. All right, see you later, Koss. Thanks for hanging out. All right, now that I have the dark armor and the rune sword, this dragon should be a piece of cake. It's gonna be embarrassing how how easily I dispatch this dragon. I wonder why I ever hadn't had a problem with him in the first place. <clears throat> I actually don't own any games in disc form anymore. I used to, but I kind of I, I tossed all of them at some point or gave them away. PC games, anyway. I do have a couple like Xbox 360 games kicking around. Oh hey, that's right. I never got the sushi, or I did, but then. Uh, I die before I could save. That's like four or five hit points right there. I gave them away? Madness. Well, it's more like I moved and I just kind of left them behind. Or they just got lost in the shuffle. But I mean, what what do I need a disc copy of Doom 3 for anymore? I doubt I'll ever play that game again. Or a disc copy of Portal. Like, I don't even know why I bought that game on disc. I could've just bought it on Steam. Go save now. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry to Jaden Mew. I mean, I can just do this if I really want the sushi. In fact, I think I had to do this in my other save. I mean, it's not that uncommon a drop. See? No biggie. You're a hoarder of games. See, I'm a full uh, adopter of the digital, the all digital lifestyle. I don't want to own any physical copy of anything I can own a, a digital copy of instead. And I'm sure that's not a great philosophy. I'm sure that'll bite me in the ass one of these days. 
But man, I just do not like having a lot of stuff. It's clutter. It makes it, you know, the shit I have to worry about when I move. Give me, uh... You know, that's why I love Steam. I love, uh... Oh, what's that site? Not sound Bandcamp. That's why I love Bandcamp, which is like the Steam for music. Uh, you know, I, I don't really buy television or movies. You know, I'll stream them when they're available, but I don't really watch much of that stuff in general. Oh God, <laughs> that fixes your OCD. <laughs> Sorry, the JDMU. Wait. Oh, I guess I already got whatever was in here. I don't think I've ever actually thrown away a game. I did throw away all of my DVDs, however. Alright, this leads me back to the crit or the, uh, the fish boss. I don't want to go that way. Yeah, it started with me throwing out all of my DVD cases. So I was like, this is way too much clutter. And I just put them all in a binder. And then all, all of my movies and TV shows on DVD sat around. And I realized I, I didn't watch any of them for like three or four years. And I was like, why do I still have these? And when it came time to move, chucked them. I'm not a very sentimental person. I mean, I do have objects with sentimental value. But, uh, you know, I don't get sentimental like, Oh man, I need to own my favorite movie on DVD. Yeah, I, th I threw them in the trash, Pippo. I really, I really should have given them to someone. But, uh, I wasn't really thinking that rationally. I mean, I didn't pay a lot for most of them. I, I bought almost all of my DVDs used, so it's not like they were super valuable. I mean, if I tried to sell them, since I only had the, the discs, I probably would have gotten like two or three dollars a piece for them, and it was just it's too much effort for the minimal amount of, or the minimal amount of rem remuneration would not have been worth the work. I might have mentioned I'm a very lazy person. Look at how little damage this dragon is doing to me. This is embarrassing. I can't believe I ever had an issue with this dragon. I need to stand here and take the full brunt of his water vomit. Alright. Oh yeah, that's right. I always want to try the bow. No, my main issue with this boss was because at the time, my armor was way inadequate for dealing with the dragon. Oh god, really? I have to go hunting for whatever my reward is again? Sigh. But yeah, every game I've ever owned physically, I'm pretty sure I either sold or gave to someone. Because games, you know, they're a little bit more... They, they retain their value a little more than uh, movies and TV shows do. I'm wondering... Hmm. Was this water... Okay, so that water is... Death. I, I thought flipping that switch might have filled that room up with water so I could go down there, but uh, that doesn't seem to be the case. Have I ever played on Epic? No, I saw a uh, saw a video of it and it looked kind of cool. I think I wish listed that one. <clears throat> All right, I might have to. Uh, wander around aimlessly until I figure, to, figure out what that button did. Oh, 
Oh well, I get to continue enjoying this music for a little while longer. After, after this, I'm done with this area forever. I actually remember what I need to get, I just don't, re I don't remember where it is. It might have actually been further down this way. Because if I remember correctly, and there's no guarantee that I do, there is an area with the fish boss that I couldn't get to before. The current Desera owner fil filing for bankruptcy. Yeah, that sucks. I wonder what's going to happen to Desera and all the games that were on there. I own two games on Desera. Uh, Laser Cat and Super Amazing Wagon Adventure. Because at the time I got Super Amazing Wagon Adventure, it wasn't available on Steam. Otherwise, I probably would have just got it there. 511 games? Holy crap, Bippo. I hope you will continue to have access to those games. Alright, so this wasn't the right way. But at least I can cross that off the list now. I mean, at least now that Steam has a green light program, it's a little easier for indie games to get on Steam. Like, a few years ago, this this game probably wouldn't have been on Steam. Uh, Desera would have been the main platform for it. But it's a little easier for games like this to get on I mean, not that everything needs to be on Steam. I mean, wait. There's a door here? Oh, they're just money. That's interesting. I actually don't know if don't know if I ever noticed that before. I mean it was just money, but uh Yeah, like it's a really crappy viewpoint, the way people act like everything needs to be on Steam or it doesn't exist. I mean, Steam is really convenient, I get that, but at the same time, developers pretty much having to go through Steam, you know, that's not... Competition is always good. So, it's a bummer to see Desert go away. At least Ichio is still around. Ichio is pretty rad. If I ever finish making the dumb little game I've been working on, I'll probably put it on Itch.io one of these days. I have no idea, I mean, this is where I fought the, uh, the snail boss, right? I have no idea that this is the right way to go, but I have to cross it off the list. I prefer most things to be on Steam. I, th I think this was the right way. Yeah, okay. I wasn't able to get up here before, but now that I beat the dragon, I can get up here and get the white orb. And the white orb does something. Uh, basically, the white orb is one of the necessary items to get the true ending in the game, beat the true final boss. So we won't see its effect for a while, but it's extremely important. Oh god. I mean, yeah, it is super convenient having everything on Steam, but... I mean, we shouldn't just... give Valve a monopoly, you know? I don't know. It's a complicated subject. I have complex feelings about it. I mean, yeah, Valve has been really awesome. But, you know, there might be a day when they're not so awesome and we might regret buying everything on Steam. You never know. <clears throat> but I mean, there have been tombs or tomes written about the subject. Devs aren't getting money from Desera? Really? 
So Destro is still selling games, but they haven't, uh... Did I... I didn't save after I got the white orb, did I? Oh, crap. This is what happens when I start running my mouth. No, I didn't, because this, this is the complete wrong area of the game. Crap. I, I guess I just didn't make it to a checkpoint. Oh, man. I mean, it's not hard to get the white orb. It's just to do all that again. And like I said, I have a lot of patience for this kind of thing. Under normal circumstances, it's just a little frustrating when it happens during a stream. I wonder how much money is actually in here. Okay. 500 gold. That's not, uh... It's not worth crying about. Not getting previously. Yeah. Oh wait, that's right. I have to put those in the correct order. If I don't want to get knocked up there by the fish. I forget what was in here before. Was it this... No, the snail boss. I'm thinking... Oh, for fuck's sake. I need to find a closer save point before I go that way, apparently. I'm trying to remember what was in there. Hmm. Oh well. I'm sure at some point I'll go back and watch my old videos and figure it out. You can tell I'm in don't give a fuck mode because I'm just walking through all the enemies. I mean, I have my dark armor. Enemies can't do anything to me. I mean, these enemies can't. Some of them can. They can knock me to my death, knock me into spikes or something. <sighs> Is it stressing you hardcore right now? Why? I don't. I don't want my videos to be stressful for people. I mean, were you here when I was trying to get that page of the Jade Mia? That was more stressful to me than this. Oh, you're talking about Desera. <laughs> Way to go, Duke. Make everything about you. I mean, if I bought a bunch of games on Desera, I'd probably be freaking out a little bit, too. Okay, good. I just don't want to be the cause of someone's stress. Maybe, uh... Maybe I was going the wrong way to find a closer save point. Maybe there's one over here. I mean, it'd be nice if there was a save point right before you went into that area. Okay, here we go. Right before you went into that area with the uh, with all the fishmen and stuff. By the way, speaking of Bandcamp, soundtrack for this game available on Bandcamp. Bandcamp's awesome. I wish I could afford to buy more music on there. I mean, it's basically the Steam of music, except that all of the music downloads are DRM free. Very cool website. A lot of indie developers, especially, putting their game soundtracks up on there. The soundtrack for Lisa, also on Bandcamp, which uh, I purchased that one. That is an excellent soundtrack. So... I mean, my philosophy is... Buy things when I can afford to. But don't feel bad about about piracy. 
you know, I spend basically as much money as I can afford on entertainment. If I spent any more, it would cut into my budget pretty severely, and it would not be a very good idea. So, you know, I support musicians and game developers and stuff wherever I can, but, uh, I do pirate, and, you know, I don't make a ton of money. And one of the, uh, I guess one of the rationales for me not really caring about physical stuff, physical media, is that I know I can always just pirate it if I need it again. And I mean, that, I guess that's a pretty crappy outlook, but, uh... <sighs> but I mean, like, with my DVDs, I bought them all used anyway, so it's not like I was supporting the industry with those. I don't know. I have complicated feelings about the subject. But yeah, when I can't afford to buy some music, Bandcamp is usually where I buy it. I mean, this part of the game isn't even hard. Why do I keep dying here? I mean, there's just a lot of these damn one-hit kill stalactites. And yeah, I'm not playing as carefully as I could, but, uh... And do they really need to be a one-hit kill? It's a little excessive. Oh, come on! I was trying to kill that snake with magic, so I, I wouldn't have to worry about it. I could just focus on not getting hit by the stalactites, but then it happened anyway. I can't believe I already got the white orb, and I'm, I'm, I'm really angry with myself right now. Oh yeah, I use YouTube to listen to music a lot. Pandora, not so much. I used to use Pandora, but... The algorithm for determining what music to play got really annoying, and I played a bunch of crap that I don't like, or play, play the same stuff over and over again. Spotify is cool, but... I don't like, I don't like the ads, and if I'm going to pay for a monthly fee, I'd rather spend that money on a CD, so a lot, or an album, on Bandcamp, so a lot, so a lot more of the money I spend goes to the artist directly. I mean, when when you pay for Spotify, very little of your money is actually going to the artists, which I, I mean, I guess that's the case when you buy a CD as well, and that's been that way for a long time. But uh, you know, I just I, I try not to be a jerk, you know. I support as much cool stuff as I can. This should not be that difficult. I don't know what my what my deal is. Maybe I just need to stop talking for this part. Enjoy the music. Screw it, I'm just jumping through that snake. I mean, yeah, it took some damage there, but if I actually try not to get hit, I was guaranteed to die on some of those spikes. And god, I have to come all the way back through this way with no save point. This is a nightmare. I mean, thank god I got that dark armor. Imagine me trying to do this without that. Oh yeah, Last.fm is awesome, Galen. Galen, I use that a I I use the, uh, the artist radio on Last.fm a lot. Like, if I really like a band, then I will 
listen to the artist radio of that band to hear more artists that, that sound similar to them. It works a lot better for me than Pandora does. But Pandora is generally not very good at determining what music I would like based on music I, uh, I put into it. But uh, Last Art FM seems a lot better at that than Pandora does. I mean, I have to get this thing. It's not optional. It's not like the page. This item actually does something. So it's something important for showing off the end of the game. No, I'm still here. I just, I just needed a moment to compose myself. Yeah, when I die, I just want here lies and then a picture of me on my tombstone. Like this guy has. Here... Here lies person. Period. And also, I, I want to make sure they put how many times I died on my tombstone. Except that I only have the one life, so it should put died one time. So that way people are really confused when they look at my tombstone. Basically I want my death to mean something. Just, rec just make an audio file of all of the LPs and streams I've ever done and just play that on a loop at my grave forever. That's my legacy. I can die more than once if they stop my heart and stuff. Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. It depends on your definition of death, I guess. Hopefully that'll never happen. I want them to stop my heart. You want your tombstone to say bye instead of rip? I just want my tombstone to say owned. Here lies Duke. And then say what I was owned by. Like if I get hit by a train. Here lies Duke, owned by a train. <sighs> Why can't there just be a save point in here? I, I, I remember this being a sticking point in my last playthrough as well. And the sad part is, I won't even get to do anything with this immediately. Like, if, if I was getting some awesome immediate reward for doing this, then that would be one thing. But this is just like an abstract, uh, an abstract re reward that might happen at some future point in time. Alright, these stalactites should be easier to avoid going back than they were coming this way. Play the monster rational loop, yeah. These are some pretty expensive tombstone ideas, but you know, I, th I think we're worth it. Just hire someone to stand at my grave 24-7 and tell my story.
I guess I'd have to hire more than one person. Like hire three people to work in eight hour shifts. Alright, thank god. Alright, so what do I do now? I have a couple options. I can continue with the, uh, it looks like a breakable block. Well, there, there are a lot of blocks that look like breakable blocks in this area. I can continue with the main quest, or there's one other area I said I'd come back to later. And I guess I can go on ahead and do that now. See, uh, the House of Ruth. I popped in for a visit, and things looked pretty hairy, so I got out of there. I will go back and, uh, and see, see if I'm better equipped to handle that area now. Main quests are boring, says Bippo. Yeah, I agree. The main quest is just, it's like the, uh, you know, it's like the vegetable of the video game meal. You know, it's there, you have to eat it, you know, but, you know, the real attraction are the side dishes and the entree. Vegetable is just kind of, it's just kind of there. Alright, uh, I think the fastest way is to keep going backwards from the cave. If I teleport it back to Alexandria, it'd be a little bit further out of my way. No side quests until you finish your main quest. Well, the side quests aren't the dessert. New Game Plus is the, is the dessert in this analogy. Which, I, I don't know if that really makes sense. Unless the New Game Plus is just way- I mean, if it's, a, if it's one of those New Game Pluses where you play through the whole game with all the awesome weapons and you're a badass for the whole time, then yeah, New Game Plus is kind of the, the dessert. But if it's just starting over and the game's harder, then that's not dessert. That's like extra vegetables. Yeah, I usually I usually do all the side quests or as many side quests as I, as I can before continuing with the main quest. In actual RPGs. I guess I could have gone in Bagu's house and saved, but that should be okay. Vegetables with ice cream? Ugh, gross. Man, I love being able to kill stuff in one hit. Hmm, I might be going the wrong way actually. I think I'm heading back to Alexandria. I don't 100% remember where the House of Ruth was. Music doesn't loop as elegantly as it could. There's kind of a visible pause <clears throat> pause there when the music loops. I'm pretty sure I'm going the wrong way now, but might as well see this out to the end. Yeah, this is a werewolf right after you enter Alexandria. Okay. I'm sure that's the wrong way. I'm going to go back and see what I can find. Points of no return. Yeah. If I, if I suspect that the game has a point of no return, then I'm usually pretty good about making multiple saves, or keeping multiple save files, or rolling save files, so that if that happens, I can always 
go back to an older save, and I won't lose that much progress. Of course, most games, or most modern games anyway, they'll tell you when you're about to reach the point of no return, which is nice. Especially if, if it's in a game where you're on some super urgent quest to save the universe. And you know, the, the Reapers are about to, to destroy Earth at any moment. But you know, if you want to go back and finish up some of those side quests first, then now's your, now, now's your chance. Maybe... Maybe the House of Ruth was on the other side of the cave. Because I'm not really seeing what I would consider to be a branching path in this area of the game. God, I bet I have to go back through the cave again. Crap. Well, this is what you get when you play an exploration platformer, especially one where you don't have a map. For me, this is part of the fun of the game is exploring the world, figuring out where to go, trying to trying to remember where stuff is. You know, it makes the world feel big and realized. Oh really the Jaded Mew? I thought Mass Effect 2 had a very clearly indicated point of no return. It has been forever since I played that game, though. Oh, at this point, I might want to just teleport back to the castle area and go backwards. It might actually be faster. That's the wrong way. The sad thing is, I'm pretty sure there's stuff I'm missing slash forgetting about, like, in this whole playthrough. Because uh, the area I showed off with the three items that you have to get to open the house, I'm pretty sure I should have gotten some of the, at least one of those items by now. And I haven't. So that's not what the White Orb does. The White Orb is actually for the, the main story. And there are three things you need to open the, uh, to open that useless area. <clears throat> but damn it, I want to open it in it. Wait. Area of the game that I completely missed. I mean, I, re I remember this area now. I just re I forgot about it in this playthrough. Because cause I remember uh, getting the boomerang before. I mean, I have better weapons than the boomerang at this point, but... You know, for completeness sake. I'm glad I picked it up. Oh, just money in that chest? Really? That's boring. Oops. That was my own fault. I was not paying attention to those spikes one bit. Now I have to remember to, how to get back down there. <sighs> the one-hit kills in this game are a little frustrating. I will admit. Here we go. So the only thing else... Well, the only thing that was th through that door was some coins. So there's no reason for me to do that again. I don't remember what's over here, though. Hope it's something good. That's yeah, like a mini-boss. It's a... Uh, is that a mermaid on land, or is that like a snake lady? Like a naga. I think it's a naga. Or a snake lady. Soul blazer, eh? Oh yeah. That one's pretty good. It reminds me of... Saifa's magic from Castlevania 3. They sort of seek out the enemies, but not very well, I think. 
I, I don't know if these fireballs seek out enemies at all. I, I think they just kind of go their own path. Soul Blazer is a cool game. I thought that was the name of a game. I don't know anything about it though. Alright, well that was an interesting detour. I'm glad I got that. I haven't decided if I'm going to try it 100% this playthrough or not. I mean, that was kind of the, the vague goal that I had, was to 100% to get everything. But uh, that might involve looking some stuff up, because I'm sure I'm forgetting about things. I mean, in my original playthrough, I had to look up, I had to look up two items that I was missing. Which I think is pretty good, considering how much stuff is in this game. I felt bad that I had to look them up, but I wasn't super worried about it. I'd like to at least get to the House of Ruth before this stream ends. I mean, I made progress. I finished the torture chambers. I went back to the cabin, the locked cabin. Beat the water snake. I feel okay about the stream. It's not as much progress as I would have liked to make. In two hours. Wow, okay. So that just, uh, that just goes straight to this area, huh? That's really frustrating. Okay. I guess I have to go back to Alexandria and figure out which direction I need to go. I apologize if my frustration is bringing the stream down. I should be, uh, I should be better than this. I try not to get mad at video games, but occasionally it does happen. So next stream, I'm hoping I'll be able to take on the Crystal Tower, because I definitely have better equipment now than I did the first time I tried it, and I almost killed that first boss, even with the crap I had before. Hmm. I forget if there's a spell that does anything in this room. I'm thinking there is, but I'm not sure which one it would be. Getting mad at video games is natural. Well, I, I like to consider my hallmark being... One of, one of my hallmarks is that I stay pretty chill. Relatively, compared to a lot of people on YouTube and Twitch. So anytime I start to lose my composure, I feel a little bad. But you're right, I could be a lot worse. I could be cussing up a storm. I could be throwing controllers at other controllers. I could be punching my TV. I could pick up my chair and throw it through a window. Although that'd be tough, my chair is pretty heavy. Alright, House of Ruth. I'm going to find you. You might not want me to find you, but I will. This isn't it. This is just, uh... This is just, uh... Decoration. There's no way to actually get in there. At least I don't think. If there is a way to get in there, then... It's extremely well hidden. And I 100 percent of the game without doing it, so... Base camp, Happy Wheels. <laughs> funny YouTube video mad. Yeah. I try not to get that kind of mad. There were videos in the past where I got that kind of mad. Or tried to. And I feel kind of bad about that now. The thing I care about most when watching an LP or a streamer is I want them to be genuine. 
I, I, I found a YouTube video the other the other day. It just it was in my recommended videos or something, and I just clicked on it randomly. And it was a guy. It was a 45 minute long video of a guy holding the controller with FIFA 15 on the screen. I, I, I'm not going to say playing FIFA 15 because he wasn't. He was like spending coins on upgrades or something. I don't know. I don't understand how soccer works. And he was just yelling the whole time. Just this really affected, like, oh, gamer voice. And he was British. And it was really obnoxious. And the video had like 10 million views of a guy sitting there yelling at soccer and looking at soccer numbers. Seeing some numbers go down and, and other numbers go up. And that's all the video was. 45 minutes of that. And I mean, I guess... I guess I shouldn't judge, since obviously I guess there there are people who who are interested in that. But I'm like, who are these people? Who who are these 10 million people watching this video? And it's not like they weren't like atrocity tourism or anything. I mean, the video had a good number of likes. It had very few dislikes, and like I just don't get it. Because I mean, he wasn't really angry about anything. Like I mean, he was. I think, I think basically what he was doing was he was buying packs of like characters or or something, and he got like random things in every pack. He had like millions of coins to spend, and he would just do all this fake yelling when when it was something he didn't want, or or if it was something good, he would like he would do like this vaguely happy yell, and just I don't know. Card unpackings, yeah, that's it, exactly, Bippo. Uh, I'm sure I would have found it funny back in 2004. I mean, I've enjoyed angry video game nerd videos in the past. I feel, I feel like that's something different because he's very obviously playing a, a character. He's not like passing this off as like the real thing, and he's not just yelling the whole time. I mean, he makes some interesting insights, some funny insights. And, I mean, it did get old after a while. I haven't actually watched Angry Video Game Nerds, Nerd videos in a while. But, I mean, there was some value there. There was some entertainment from that. Because he was, he was, I mean, the editing was good. He was actually trying to, you know, he was trying to make a product. Okay, so that leads to the cave, right? You know, he was trying to make a thing. And this guy, it was just, you know, his face cam was on. He was making all kinds of ridiculous faces like, oh my god, oh, why? I mean, I'm not going to try to, to do an imitation of him because it's just, I mean, he just sounds like, I don't know. But, you know, here I am talking shit about people and that's not, that's not good entertainment either. Yeah, I mean, I get that, the JDMU. Not being a fan of Angry Video Game Nerd. I mean, like I said, I, I eventually stopped watching him. Because people being real are just so much more entertaining. I mean, that's why I like Giant Bomb so much. They don't do any ridiculous stunts or anything, or, you know, play characters. You know, they're just genuinely cool people who play video games and say what they think about video games and. You know, their podcasts are great. Everyone who works for that site is awesome. And, you know, that's that's kind of the uh, the level that I kind of aim for, you know? I just want to be a, a semi-interesting guy who plays video games and is himself. So I guess if I get genuinely angry at a game... Here we go! Wow, that took way too long. If I get genuinely angry at a game, it's fine, but I still kind of feel bad when it happens. Alright, well, this has been an extremely roundabout Castle in the Darkness episode. I've, I've just been all over the place. Let's see how much better my sword is at killing this guy. This is my litmus test. Alright, still took quite a few hits, but that's definitely more manage manageable than the sword I have when I came here. Alright, well, uh, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, 
I will stream again sometime this week, I think. Uh, it might be the Binding of Isaac Rebirth, it might be this, it might be something different, I'm not sure. You know, watch the, <clears throat> the various social media outlets and be notified of when more streams will happen. Uh, and apologies for, you know, getting stuck a few times in this episode, it happens. And I'm glad I didn't comp completely lose my cool. Uh, hopefully subtitles will work on this video, which if they do, then you probably already know that since you're watching this on YouTube. Get really mad at VGA. What, like VGA graphics? Or is that just an abbreviation of video games? I don't know. Anyway, I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.